Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwann and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of meeting with Joseph Fung. He's the CEO of Kite. Thank welcome, you, Joseph. Thank you for having me. So in this conference, Sales 3.0, we mm -hmm. talked a lot about uh, collaboration mm -hmm. and co-creation. Uh, how do you relate to that topic? Uh, I mean, professionally, one of the things that we get to see all the time, not just within our own workforce, but our customers, is sales teams, sales leaders, enablement teams co-creating their playbooks, and learning how to help a playbook work well for their employees, their customers, and, and their enablement team. Uh, but for the conference today and yesterday, I think one of the things that was so remarkable was that there was a lot of collaboration with ideas, uh, but also a huge amount of humility and candor and, and shared creativity. And that was really unique to see in a conference environment. Um, you have, been, have you been to many conferences? Uh, to many conferences, sales 3.0 conferences right. as well. And uh, uh, I think it really, really stood out in, the, in this session how collaborative uh, all of the attendees right. and the sponsors were together. So do you think that collaboration is like a mindset that uh, uh, where people see benefits of doing things together instead of uh, doing things to each other? <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. I mean, when you see that mutual respect, uh, when you see the the recognition that the outcome is a, a separate object, it's not just about me and you, it's this, this thing that we're building together. Right, right. Uh, you see way better alignment, uh, and I think that's what we truly saw in the conference. Uh, you know, we did some work together co-creating a, a shared resource right, for the conference, right. uh, and you've had some fantastic speakers talking about co-creation and collaboration right, right. and uh, I think we got to see everybody exercise those muscles really well during the conference. So where did you first sort of realized that uh, collaboration is sort of the future uh, of business? Uh, there's no oh, first recognizing it is tough to identify the first but I think the items that that jump out the most uh, is when we started to see the outcomes it, in business it's really easy for us to adopt a, a command and control model. Right. You have the leaders, the supervisors say, this is how it will be, right. push it down through the org chart. Right, right. But when you have the systems and the culture to pull feedback from the individuals, the teams, and use that to make the, the outcome or the process of the system better, right. you end up with a better result. Right. And right. being a software developer, we get to see that right. in the technology happen every day. But I think the, the Kite is really a tool that flattens organizations. Oh, very much. It allows the, the most senior person in the organization to identify tips, tricks, techniques that work on the front lines right. and then elevate them, cherry pick right. them, and disseminate right. them out right. to the whole group. So what you're saying, the collaboration is geared towards uh, the creation of better ideas and not reinforcing the hierarchy. Generally, yeah. The big thing is that it's, yeah, when you have a truly collaborative environment, uh, it allows you to get one step closer to that ideal of a meritocracy where the most successful techniques, the most successful tricks actually work. And we see this. We'll see reps who experiment in the white space, maybe where the, the playbook or their methodology right. doesn't cover them, uh, and where their lessons work, sharing that with everyone, and then everyone in the company right. benefits. Right. So it's definitely so uh, beyond the hierarchy. Let's, let's assume I joined Kite tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How would you enculturate me and uh, put me at the same level as the other collaborators. Well, one of the first things we'd do is we'd give you access to the playbooks that we'd all created to introduce ourselves, invite you to create one of your own, both giving you a chance to use the software and share more about yourself as a person, uh, but then immediately we'd be pointing you to the playbooks of your successful colleagues so you could follow those playbooks and see which techniques, tools, and pieces of even collateral or scripts work for them. So you get to cherry pick from the best instead of just being given a static manual. Right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about how you designed your culture at Kite. We very much aim to have a flat organization. Uh, and the primary way we do that is by doubling down on our company values. I think a lot of organizations wait until values are emergent. Whereas when we built our company, we, we helped define them right at the get go. And I think the two that are most profound are honesty and empathy. You know, people talk about empathizing with people by walking a mile in their shoes. Well, that's easier if they're honest about their shoe size. And so having both sides of those are really important. So when we have sales reps 
and they say, hey, this isn't working, here's this other way to do it, our executives know to empathize and hear that. Uh, and likewise, if there's a specific reason where we need to follow it, or if there's a specific change that reps want to see, we foster a clear culture of honesty. So it doesn't matter if you're a, a C-level executive or an individual contributor or a manager, that honesty and empathy is important because mm. that's how we drive that, right. uh, that sense of transparency and, and a very flat hierarchy. Right. One of the themes that popped up at our conference was also the work-life balance. Um, and as a leader, uh, when you talk about empathy, uh, you really have a responsibility to learn about uh, the team mm -hmm. and how their work impacts their personal life. Very much. And for us, it had to be a very deliberate thing. Because we have a repeat founding team, it would be very easy to have that kernel reinforce that idea of close familiarity. Mm -hmm. So it was important that at the get-go, we worked very hard to build those personal relationships and get to know all of the team members. Right. And so that's why I mentioned day one, one of the first things you'd get is the playbooks. Mm -hmm. where we ask people to share their interests, their hobbies. Mm -hmm. Every new employee mm -hmm. is asked to do a quick one minute presentation on themselves where they prep that material. And then all of that's made available to every new employee as well. And that personal connection is really what's so crucial. Right. Because the reality is, and we, we fall into this trap all the time, we tell our company, watch the unique selling journey, the unique buying journey of your customers. Tailor your sales process to fit their unique mm -hmm. journey, mm -hmm. and we so rarely do it for our own employees. Right. Every person, whether they're a sales rep or not, has their own learning journey and their own growth mm -hmm. journey. Our tools should support that unique journey, not just dictate one set, static, uniform right. process. Right. So how do you ensure that the best idea rises to the top? The technology definitely helps by making it easy for people to share, to favorite, to like. You can monitor and streamline that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's the single easiest way because mm -hmm. then you don't have to do anything else. You can let the technology. Right. Uh, the harder one uh, and the more profound is also encouraging that culture of honesty. Right. So the reps know their ideas, their feedback, so that uh, employees know their suggestions are welcome and will be recognized. Right. How do you think uh, the future looks like with AI increasing the capacity that we have to collaborate? I think the interesting part is that it incentivizes people to contribute. You take a look at things like uh, YouTube. Easy item, YouTube's algorithms recommend new videos, new content to you. Mm -hmm. But if people aren't favoriting, liking, viewing, there's nothing for an algorithm to work on. And so without that type of interaction and engagement, an algorithm alone can't do anything. And so as more companies roll out systems, they'll be encouraging employees to get involved more. So for us, when we see employees customizing a playbook, favoriting, liking, moving things around, that's actually what informs our algorithms to recommend the right content. So I think we'll see across every industry, every space, increased recommendation to solicit employee feedback, mm -hmm. employee input. And I spoke about this in my session. I left everyone with three questions they could go back with to their team to get insights and best practices and fold into their playbooks. Uh, and I think AI is going to drive that even more. So how do you align your company with two things? One is what gives you the most meaning, mm -hmm. and two, that gives you a sense that you're really contributing to a better society, a better world. Well, the two are inextricably linked. I mean, to, to give meaning, we come back to our, our company vision. Yeah. And our idea is to help every employee around the world instantly deliver expertise. Whether you're a day one employee, a day 365, or a year three employee, being able to deliver that level of expertise to your colleagues and your customers and your partners, uh, that's what gets us so excited. Uh, and what's important is when we think about that experience, employee on the field delivering expertise and putting it in their context that's also what helps us do things mm -hmm. properly so I think about that employee if you have an AI algorithm in the mix that changes the way they see their role the way the company mm -hmm. sees them and so one of the first things we did was we partnered with the University of Western Ontario their IO psychology group to examine how AI changes trust in the workplace because the way you trust your manager is different than you trust an algorithm mm -hmm. and so by being able to think about that end employee that acts as a great touchstone to make sure we're doing things right, but also gives incredible value and meaning to our work every day. Yeah. So in, the, in a way, I see Kite as a transformation tool that gives companies the opportunity to 
give every employee three roles. One, the role of the student, mm -hmm. the role of the professor, and the role of the artist. 100%. The ability to create, learn, and coach all simultaneously is part of what makes it so magical. Right. Where does the name Kite come from? So Kite, uh, it's spelled, like all startups, a little bit differently, K-I-I-T-E. Uh, and while it's a magnificent sense of elevation, it's uplifting, it's playful, and you see that in our logo, right. the, the word itself is also a Japanese word, kite, which means to listen. If you think about building an AI product right. that learns in a collaborative environment, listening is step one. Right. I uh, Originally, when I thought of it, I thought this is like a kite that rises, but it has an extra I that stands for intelligence and intuition. And you could say we, we keep both eyes on the situation and, and make sure that the best information floats up, and all of those things are true. How can people learn more about you and your company? Uh, the best way is to check out our website, kite.ai, K-I-I-T-E dot A-I. Uh, but also all of our leadership team is accessible online, so you can reach out on Twitter and LinkedIn, of course. Awesome. This has been great, Gerhard. I'm glad we were able to chat, and thank you for having us. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, thanks to your amazing team that has made our conference so successful. Our pleasure.